This conference will now be recorded. Hello, and welcome to the HMIS at NCCEH uh, Introduction to Data Standards Training on Coordinated Entry Data Elements. First off, let's start with a review of what we mean by coordinated entry. What we mean it could encompass activities in any one of these project types. Coordinated entry refers to the access, assessment, prioritization, and referral for services, um, either addressing a client's current emergency crisis needs or more permanent housing, uh, housing stabilization services. So when we think of our coordinated entry system and how we want to, uh, to track and report activities, we're really talking about everything from the homeless prevention and diversion services that um, may support a client in avoiding becoming literally homeless all the way through, you know, those crisis services on the street or supportive services um, when someone is experiencing homelessness and, you know, through temporary housing like emergency shelter, transitional housing, um, and, you know, ultimately those housing stabilization services from rapid rehousing, permanent supportive housing, or even aftercare sort of prevention services. Um, in the community. So we really want to emphasize that there's a, a role for each of us to play in a coordinated entry surf, uh, system. The first element we'll talk about is coordinated entry assessment. And what this does is it collects an assessment date, location, and result. And so this is really focused on collection at homeless prevention or diversion projects and any additional coordinated entry access points. Each of those projects are required to collect this. And this may differ in different local communities. This also collects uh, something called the assessment level, which is either crisis need for those immediate emergency services or housing needs for stabilization. Uh, and you may, uh, just to put this into context, um, some of those diversion services would likely be crisis needs. Um, maybe you're uh, doing an assessment to figure out if um, the client is being prioritized for emergency shelters, um, whereas the housing needs assessment would look more like the VI SPDAT that many communities use. There's also a question about prioritization status, which refers to whether the client is placed on the binding list for housing resources. So this is a little more specific to those housing resources, and you'll just mark whether or not the client was placed on that list. Now, most of the time, most of our clients are placed on the prioritization list. It's just a matter of where on the list they're placed. Um, but there are some cases where a client would be ineligible um, or uh, not appropriate for that prioritization list. So you'll want to mark that appropriately. Who do we collect this on? We are collecting this for heads of households only. So there is one coordinated entry assessment per household. And you just want to make a record of that for the head of household, our, our primary client. This may occur at any data collection stage, whether that's project start, any interims, updates, um, or project exit. This may determine um, when you begin services. It may be something you're working with a client on, say, 14 days after they start services with you or it, it may be something that is conducted upon them leaving. Another reminder is that this is a record of the assessment occurring. This is not the assessment questions itself. So this does not replace data entry for the kind of detailed responses 
to the assessments, like entering the VI SPADAT responses in HMIS. This really is that record that this occurred and the ultimate result of that, prioritization or not. And as a reminder, um, we often have a lot of dates associated with um, different elements, and we'll be using the same start information and end date for the assessment. You're just going to record when this assessment occurred. Let's take a look at the paper assessment now. This breaks down the coordinated entry assessment data element into its different pieces. So first off, we have the date of the assessment. This will just be when you conducted this coordinated entry assessment. Then we look at the assessment location, and this is customized per COC. So um, what you'll see first is just the, the orange COC with their different responses there, handful of responses for different locations where this assessment was conducted. And we also have the different regions listed for the balance of state COC. The balance of state CSC determines that their region, uh, regions were the best location to enter because um, the, the CSC is, is so vast. So you'll just select whichever region applies. We're currently working with them to determine the best results for this. The other questions uh, as a part of this data element are assessment type, assessment level, and prioritization status. Assessment type should be uh, fairly self-evident. Um, if you did this over the phone, uh, you'll use that virtually. Another method, um, you can do that. Uh, check that off. And in person is also another type. We'll likely see a lot more phone and virtual assessments. Um, throughout this pandemic. The assessment level, as I said, is really determining uh, which needs this assessment is uh, determining services for. So is it the crisis needs assessment that's looking at immediate emergency services, or is this housing stabilization that is looking for um, those longer term uh, permanent housing needs? And again, communities right now are mostly using the VI SPID app for housing needs assessment. Prioritization status is just about placing someone on the prioritization list, also known as a by name list. So does the result of this assessment mean that the client is being placed on the community by name list for housing resources? And that's it, that's coordinated entry assessment. So just to review, uh, which projects are we going to uh, use or record the CE assessment on? When are we going to record these and for which clients? We're gonna record this response for homeless prevention, diversion, and any coordinated entry access point. Another way to think of this is if you do a VI to that, you should record the record of the CE assessment. We will do this whenever there is a crisis or housing assessment that occurs. So this can be recorded at project start, interim, or exit. And this will be recorded once for each household under the head of household. All right, let's go to our coordinated entry event, our next coordinated entry data element. This looks at and collects the key referral placement and referral results for clients or households. This also includes a, a date and the event type, and it's really helpful uh, to look at the event types to determine 
what sort of activities are considered a coordinated entry event. So we'll take a look in just a moment. This is uh, re recorded by all coordinated entry referral partners. So whether you're doing the referring or receiving the referral, you're going to want to record this element. And coordinated entry events may need to be updated over time until the event is resolved. For example, if a referral uh, occurs for a permanent housing project, the result and date are reported as well. And that may take, you know, days, um, if not weeks, to occur. So you'll be going back to this event to show its resolution. This is collected per household, so only recorded under our heads of households. And like coordinated entry assessment, coordinated entry events can be recorded under a client start, interim, or exit data collection stage. This should be recorded whenever it occurs. A special reminder for this uh, element is that there's some questions with conditional logic. So if an answer is this, then you need to do this. So you'll want to make sure you're following the instructions in the paper or in HMIS. And similar to our last element, we'll use the same start information and end date to record this event. Okay, so let's take a look at what the event really encapsulates. On the paper assessment, you'll see that at the beginning, we have our start date or date of event. When did this referral occur? When did this access event occur? Um, and let's go now into more detail with those event types. So there's two categories of events. The first is an access event. This is uh, looking at referral to prevention assistance projects. So this would be your homeless prevention projects, uh, maybe eviction prevention projects. Did an event occur with problem solving or diversion conversation or rapid resolution? That is considered an event itself. And then if you're needing to refer for a coordinated entry assessment to occur, you would also record that as an access event. Um, so if you yourself are not an act, a coordinated entry access point and you need to send someone to, uh, to be scheduled, you could record that there. And notice in the paper assessment, we have some directions on the right-hand side, go to A, go to B for different uh, responses. So we'll, we'll follow up with that conditional logic in just a moment. The second type of event type is referral events. And these are referral events to other, uh, other project types. So um, we've got referral to follow-up case management, post-placement, or aftercare, you could consider that. Street outreach projects or services, housing navigation projects or services. We also have non-continuum services here. So if the client is referred outside of our community resources uh, due to ineligibility or there's not enough resources in the community to serve them, we can record that as well. And those are really important for some of our system level reporting. We also have referral to an emergency shelter bed opening, transitional housing bed opening, and joint transitional housing or rapid rehousing project opening. Um, those are really looking at whether that bed is specifically open. So this is not a referral to a wait list for emergency shelter or transitional housing. This is a referral to an opening. We also have more permanent housing resources on here, referral to rapid rehousing, project resource opening, 
permanent supportive housing project resource opening and other permanent housing project resource opening. Other permanent housing is just uh, a permanent housing project without the services provided by rapid housing or permanent supportive housing. They can also participate in HMIS. And so these referral events um, are looking at services that more firmly place the client within the, the homeless services system. You'll also notice that there is some conditional logic for some of these referral events that says go to see. So these directions on the right-hand side just refer to some follow-up questions that we'll take a look at now. So right below this list of event types, you'll see three different follow-up questions labeled as A, B, and C, um, so you can follow the directions from above. The first is, if an event answer was problem-solving diversion or rapid uh, resolution intervention, please answer the following question. And so, again, if there's that rapid resolution, respond there. Uh, if the event answer was a referral to post placement or follow up case management, you'll want to uh, refer here to that aftercare project. And then uh, finally, if the referral was to emergency shelter, transitional housing, joint transitional housing and rapid rehousing, rapid rehousing alone, permanent supportive housing alone, or other permanent housing opening then you'll want to respond here to see. If the event is the result of a referral, uh, then you have D and E to respond to. So uh, that may occur all at once, but usually it'll be um, a separate uh, event. So referring of the resource and the receiving of that resource. All right, so we got a quick peek of those responses there. Let's look at the CE event summary. So for which projects, when, and which clients. We're going to want to collect this for all coordinated entry referral partners. That includes homeless prevention, diversion, coordinated entry access points, crisis services providers, and permanent housing service providers basically everyone. When, this will uh, be recorded at a qualifying event as it occurs. So we really want to take a look at those event types and recall what those were. Either access or referral events. And for which clients? This is collected for heads of households only. Um, each household will have one coordinated entry event. Now let's look at our next coordinated entry data element, current living situation. This is where the client is staying at the time of interaction. So this is a kind of a related list to our prior living situation, which is for the night before an intake. Current living situation is for where the client is staying at the time of interaction. This supports but does not replace eligibility verification. Let's say that again. So this response can help support eligibility verification, but it, it can indicate where documentation could occur, but this does not replace any documentation or verification needed by funding partners. This must be collected for street outreach projects and HUD supported services only projects for coordinated entry and all past projects. So this is very specific to particular project types. Examples of when and where current living situations should be collected are when a street outreach worker meets with the client about well, their well-being or needs, about a housing plan in the office, 
or for a referral to another service. And each of those activities, you'd want to correct the client's current living situation. Where are they staying? This is collected for all adults and heads of households. So if you're working with a household with more than one person who is 18 or older, that will need to be collected for each of those adults. Remember, adults are 18 or older, not, uh, it doesn't depend on their role or relationship in the household. This is collected whenever that interaction occurs, so that could be at a project start, that could be at a, a day of engagement for Spree Outreach Project, that could be at any interim update, uh, whenever you learn about uh, changing income, or, you know, as we said, um, when you're serving clients with housing navigation services, or at project exit. And a reminder is that any contact with the client, especially when this response changes, should be recorded in HMIS. And just as a reminder, this could mean significantly more interim updates than you're used to. Let's take a look at the paper assessment. First off, we've got a date. When was this contact with the client? When was this interaction? And then where was the client living during this contact? And you'll see a very familiar list that's divided into homeless, institutional, and temporary or permanent responses. This is almost identical to our prior living situation list. Again, this is about the situation the client is staying in, not a geographic location. After you identify that location, or that situation rather, uh, there are some follow-up questions. So if the client was staying in an institutional, temporary, or permanent living situation, then we have follow-up questions. Is the client going to leave their current living situation within 14 days? Yes or no? If yes, then there are four additional questions for the client to, to respond to. Has the uh, subsequent residence been identified? Are there any resources that could support the client obtaining permanent housing? What their their housing history looks like, a couple of questions about that. Has the client had a lease or ownership interest in permanent housing in the last 60 days? And has the client moved two or more times in the last 60 days? All of this is building some information about the client's uh, housing status, whether they're imminently at risk of, of homelessness or literally homeless. Um, or maybe not a, a, HUD, a HUD recognized category of homelessness. Uh, so as a reminder, you'll see that the coding of the different responses in that list of living situations, whether that's institutional, temporary, or permanent, and then respond to these follow-up questions as needed. Additionally, there's a text box at the bottom, uh, just for writing uh, whatever whatever details may be appropriate for the client's uh, current living situation location detail. So if this is a client that's staying on the street, maybe it's helpful to uh, write an intersection near where they're staying um, or a, a frequent location that the client is known to go to. Um, that can that can help provide some information as you're returning to the client file about where they were staying. It's not required to fill out these location details. This is an optional support tool. All right, so let's take a look at what we reviewed for our current living situation. This is required for our street outreach and HUD coordinate entry projects and all past projects. This should be recorded at client interaction. And this should be recorded for all adults and heads of households. 
All right. Well, thank you for joining us for this introduction to data standard coordinated entry data elements. If you have any questions, please reach out. And, uh, thank you so much.